stop, stop, stop the cigarettes before they stop you. E-cigarette use is growing at a phenomenal rate. These electronic devices have been chosen by many smokers as a replacement for smoking cigarettes or tobacco. Not everyone agrees with the use of e-cigarettes and some news stories have left many people confused about just how safe they are compared to smoking. I want to find out whether e-cigarettes might give smokers a better chance at life than an early death that awakes many of them. And I want to understand how e-cigarettes have become such a popular choice in helping people to quit the habit and just how safe they are compared to smoking tobacco. First of all, I need to know just how harmful smoking regular tobacco really is. The death toll from smoking is staggering. Uh, about 100,000 people a year in the UK, about 700,000 a year in the European Union and about 6 million worldwide die early as a result of their smoking. Um, it's a cause of well over 60 known diseases, um, many forms of cancer, cardiovascular disease, stroke, emphysema and, and so on. Incredibly damaging thing to do to your health if you smoke and you keep smoking throughout your adult life. With such alarming statistics from smoking, I want to find out what the medical profession thinks of e-cigarettes. As a doctor, I think that we can recommend for our patients who smoke to switch to electronic cigarettes. The evidence so far supports the switch. We know that electronic cigarettes are far less risky than continuing to smoke. We might be surprised to see how many people follow our advice, stop using regular tobacco and will eventually save many years of their life. So it is clear that some people in the medical profession believe that e-cigarettes as an alternative to smoking can be good for health. Five and a bit years ago, smoking 60 a day and I'd cut down, I'm here to tell you. Um, and one of the guys came into the rehearsal studio where I worked with what looked like a fag on the go, this is post 2007, smoking bans in place. I shouted, you can't use that in here. And he said, it's all right, Dave, it's a plastic tab. And I said, get out here, give us a look. How does that work? Had a go and I asked the fourth question that I've been asked a million times, where can I get one of them? Because um, the bottom line on it was, I saw a way of getting past the smoking ban. Because everywhere I worked, there was a smoking ban. So, uh, yeah, 10 days later, I didn't smoke cigarettes anymore. At the moment, there's only 700,000 people that have completely switched to e-cigs and no longer smoking. And yeah, there's 1.4 million that are on that journey, but there's nothing to stop that 1.4 million becoming part of a 2.1 million people who have completely switched. And that, I think, is, that's a public health dividend that most people would like to see. Many people are choosing e-cigarettes over smoking. John Diver is one of them. Some people have said to me that I've, I've quit smoking for another nicotine habit, but I wasn't interested in quitting, so it makes no difference to me. I, I use nicotine and I enjoy it. Um, nicotine in itself is, fairly innocuous, it's not particularly harmful. It's the tar and in the smoke that, that, that causes all the, all the disease and the death. Um, so it doesn't bother me any more than it bothers me that people might say I'm addicted to coffee. I think smokers choose to switch to e-cigarettes because they've thought for a while that they really do need to stop smoking. But they, they may have rejected um, other other ways of doing it, like you know, they, most smokers know about patches and gum and lozenges and that sort of thing, and they may not have thought that was for them. It's a completely rational and ethical thing to suggest to them that they try something that over two million people in the UK are now trying, and seven hundred thousand have found successful. Uh, and, and actually, I would say if they didn't do that, they were being somewhat negligent. So it's clear, some people believe wholeheartedly that e-cigarettes are a force for good for smokers. But just what is an e-cigarette? First of all, there's the base of the device. 
Inside the base includes the electronics and protection circuit. Then there's the battery. On top of that sits the tank and the drip tip. The tank is made up of two sections. Part of it holds the e-liquid and part of it contains the heating element or coil. A wicking material made of cotton, silica or sometimes steel mesh transfers the e-liquid to the coil. Simply press the power button and the coil begins to glow, vaporises the e-liquid, which in turn produces the vapour to be inhaled. There are three generations of e-cigs, or that's, that's the way it's generally perceived. The first generation would be something that looks like a traditional tobacco cigarette. It could be a one piece or it could, as in this case, come in two parts. Um, the battery is really, really tiny. Um, the reservoir for any liquid is really, really tiny and that really wouldn't last me much longer than an hour. So that's first generation. It's a proof of concept. It lets you know that the things work, but really it's not a great deal better than that. Second generation, much bigger, as you'll be able to see. The battery's a lot bigger, and this section down here up to this bright silver mark is the battery, so it's a lot bigger. And that would get many vapors through a day. A 20 a day smoker might be able to use one of those for a full day. And of course, the liquid reservoir is also much bigger. And again, there are many 20 a day smokers, or X smokers as they would be when they were vaping, um, that could get through a day on one of those or close to a day. Generation 3 takes things a little bit further. Up until Generation 2 you couldn't vary the power, you couldn't tailor the experience to suit yourself. But with Generation 3 we get a little knob or a menued system or some way of varying the amount of power that actually gets to the working part, to the gubbins at the other end. And that then allows you to tailor your experience to suit exactly what you want out of it. And again, as you see, if I put all three together, we're going from tiny weeny battery up to reasonably large battery up to a battery that's definitely going to last an X 20 a day smoker pretty much the whole of the day. Um, yeah, I suppose somebody that was just coming into it might look at a generation one and think, I understand that, I know that, that's familiar. But it doesn't take very long after they've gotten one of these to realise these do the job so much nicer. I think the um, prominent rise of the electronic cigarette industry from its humble beginnings, which were essentially based on the internet, um, is down to some key factors. I think the product appeals to people on many levels. Um, certainly the choice and availability of flavours has a significant impact in why people continue to come back and, and are enjoying the product. 2013 was a significant year for the industry where we believe that it experienced triple digit growth hitting somewhere in the region of 190 million within the UK alone. There's no reason to doubt why this wouldn't increase over at least double digits over the next five years. With e-cigarettes being used by thousands of people every day, just how seriously does the industry treat health and safety? We ourselves are vapors. Um, and we're really passionate about these products. And our view is that although it would be hard to make an electronic cigarette that's as dangerous as smoking, nevertheless, our view is that they should be as safe as they can possibly be. So our focus has been on consumer protection from day one, looking at the regulation that's there already, what's missing and filling in those gaps so that we can make these products absolutely tip top, the best they can possibly be, to assure people that they are safe making the switch away from tobacco smoking into vaping and hopefully saving a lot of lives that way. We're always keen to work closely with trading standards, take advice from the people who would care about how the product is presented to the market. This might include tests for toxicity, diacetol, other things that shouldn't be in the flavours that we use. All of our ingredients are UK sourced, pharmaceutical grade for the, for the glycols and for the nicotine and we ensure that the product that we put on the shelf is the best possible quality that we can produce. With so many people switching and millions of smokers out there, who is most likely to be switching right now? One thing that we've learned in the Stop Smoking service is that the people who take to e-cigarettes best tend to be 
more well-educated people, people who, who are um, what you might call in a more affluent bracket and people who are internet savvy. So they've done some research of their own uh, on the internet. My concern as a manager of a stop smoking service is that we start to get the word out to people who live more chaotic lives perhaps, people who suffer from you know, very poor physical and mental health or who are very um, financially impoverished, I suppose, because they're the ones that this could make so much impact on, but they're the ones that are least likely to, to you know, experiment because perhaps they can't afford to just go and buy 30 quid's worth of kit uh, at a, a, a specialist retailer. We know a lot about e-cigarettes, contrary to what some people would have you believe. Um, it starts from the basic physics and chemistry. Um, we know that the ingredients are pretty simple and pretty benign. We know there's no combustion, so there's no products of combustion. The chem chemistry is relatively straightforward. We know from toxicology assessments that there are some contaminants in, in these products, but they are at very low levels indeed, you know, um, many, many times lower than in cigarette smoke. We see people using the products, nothing bad has really happened to them, some minor rotations at worst, uh, and most people who use them report immediate significant gains in their health and well-being. So we can be fairly confident. Stop these cigarettes before they stop you. There are a large number of benefits of using e-cigarettes if you currently smoke. I think one has to remember the risks of smoking tobacco are large. In fact, it will kill half of all users. What we know about electronic cigarettes is it provides the nicotine, which is what smokers miss when they stop smoking, but without the numerous toxins that are contained in tobacco smoke. And it's not the nicotine that causes the damage, it's everything else in tobacco smoke that is causing the harm. So for people who smoke, I would certainly recommend that they seriously think about switching to electronic cigarettes. So I'm getting nothing but positive vibes about e-cigarettes. But what about the concerns we hear and read in the media? There are a number of concerns people have raised about electronic cigarettes. However, largely at the moment, these are mostly theoretical. These include things like a gateway effect, where you'd have people that have never smoked and perhaps would never have started smoking, but where they start using an electronic cigarette and this somehow leads them to smoking regular uh, tobacco. The evidence at the moment, though, suggests that this is not happening. Sure, we're having people experiment with electronic cigarettes, but actually the percentage that become regular users is actually quite low. In fact, it's somewhere between 12 and 14 percent. So at the moment, most electronic cigarette uh, users are really only just trying it um, and are not really moving on to daily or, or regular use. And this is probably because electronic cigarettes are not quite as good as they need to be to really compete with uh, tobacco smoke. The, the paradox is the more closely it, it mirrors the experience of smoking in terms of the rate at which it delivers nicotine and some of the flavours, the more effective is it is as a substitute for smoking. There's a big risk in treating vapours like smokers. And that is that you destroy the, one of the incentives or some of the incentives to switch. Um, without a doubt, a number of people have switched from smoking to vaping because it allows them to back into pubs, back into clubs, back into indoor premises. Um, if you take this away, you remove one of the drivers to switch and actually there's a negative public health impact to doing that. What we are is people who use nicotine but who don't want to die. And so we found a safer alternative and what we believe that um, that vaping should be treated as something separate from smoking. As these devices are becoming so popular, isn't it important that we regulate them and control advertising of them? You know, if you over-regulate something that's designed to reduce harm, designed to compete with cigarettes, you're basically protecting cigarettes from competition. You're, pre you're preventing cigarettes facing a more attractive competitor. And you might as well be going out to work and protecting the cigarette sales. And that's what it boils down to. They don't, so, for example, the European Union's decided that it ought to ban advertising of e-cigarettes. That's a gift to the cigarette sellers because that's a competitor that can't now advertise. So you have to think all the time, what are the perverse and unintended consequences of this regulatory measure that I think I would like to take? Because it could end up in more smoking, more cigarette sales, more disease and more death. 
it's really important that advertising is undertaken responsibly so that children and minors are not targeted. We've always been very clear that we support a mandated age restriction for these products. They're for adult smokers, they're not for children, any more than tobacco cigarettes are for children. That said, it's really important that advertising of these products is possible to be targeted to adult smokers so that they can be made aware that they have this option and more of them can be persuaded to switch away from smoking. It is important to recognise that we don't want to encourage children or young people to take up this product but at the same time striking the balance with making it available to those people who really need it. And we've, we've witnessed firsthand the impact that this product can have on people's lives. It really is that bigger disruptive technology. The changes that people have told us about on a day-to-day -day basis, and th many thousands of customers, is, a, is ev evident and testament to that. Striking the balance between choice, we often get criticised for some of the flavours that we produce, and making sure that we're not appealing to the wrong demographic is quite tricky, but it's one that's crucial to let people know that they can not only choose what flavour they'd like to vape, but also what strength of the <coughs> nicotine they'd like within that fluid. Another concern is it renormalises smoking. And the tobacco control sector has, of course, worked very hard over a number of years. And some people are worried that by introducing uh, electronic cigarettes, where people uh, smoke them perhaps like normal cigarettes, that it might somehow undermine all of the good work that's been done. They're worried that it will create a gateway effect to uh, new smokers. You know, so people will get used to using nicotine on e-cigarettes and then switch to smoking. No evidence whatsoever any of this is happening. It's all actually heading in the opposite direction. If it's a gateway, it's a gateway out. We really need to, to, to work with them to find something that does work. And e-cigarettes seem to be the thing that, that makes the difference. And in fact, what electronic cigarette use normalises is electronic cigarette use, not regular smoking. So again, there's no evidence at the moment to support the fact that electronic cigarettes are undermining all this good work that uh, people have been doing. We know from talking to our service users that what healthcare professionals say to them is quite important. So for instance we've had people say to us that their GP has told them that e-cigarettes are far more dangerous than regular cigarettes. We know that's not true um, and, uh, and yet they'll go away and continue smoking because they think that they're, they're choosing the, the least a harmful option. Now one of the Leicester City GPs compares vaping and smoking like comparing a skyscraper with a doorstep in terms of danger. So the skyscraper is smoking regular cigarettes with all the chemicals and the smoke that you get from that and you compare that with the doorstep that is vaping um, far far less less harmful and, and that's a really good way of, of describing it to people who maybe you know don't understand what the comparative dangers are. And indeed we don't know the long-term risks of regular electronic cigarette use. We do however know that short-term use is associated with very few risks indeed. In fact most people complain of only localised effects, the taste, the, the tickle in the back of the throat, uh, and really nothing else at all. Now it is possible that risks may emerge in the future, but we don't know what those are or even what to look for at the moment. And the only way of really uh, realising some of these risks would be for a large population of people to, to use them. So I think the way forward at the moment is to let people use them, what we do know is that they are significantly less risky than continuing to smoke and that's the only comparator we really need to make because it's people who smoke that are switching to these devices not people who don't smoke. The nice guidance on harm reduction says you know if, if, if it's nicotine that people need use that to stop going back to uh, combustible cigarettes. E-cigarettes have become a significant force for good they're a clearly far less risky alternative to smoking tobacco and it, they represent a sea change in attracting people away from those potential dangers. Here's an opportunity for public health bodies to stop in their tracks and recognise the real reasons e-cigarettes have been so successful. It's not through regulation, it's not through medicalisation and not through taxation. 
Rather, it's through allowing people to think for themselves, to get easy access to e-cigarettes and choose a far less risky alternative. This is revolutionary and as Professor Robert West says, uh, e-cigarettes could see the end of the smoking epidemic in our lifetime. I never thought I would say that as a healthcare professional. Do I think electronic cigarettes can save lives? I think they're potentially the biggest thing that public health has had for a very long time. I think they could save hundreds of thousands of lives of people who would otherwise be smoking. From the people I've spoken to, I can take confidence that e-cigarettes are a better choice as an alternative to smoking. So here's a final passionate word from committed vapour, David Dorn. So there we are. These people are showing it. The evidence is in. And the evidence says that e-cigs represent the biggest gift to public health that we've seen in decades. There is no doubt they are a good thing. The first generation would be something that looks like a traditional tobacco cigarette. It could be a one piece or it could, as in this case, come in two parts. Um, the battery is really, really tiny. Um, the reservoir for any liquid is really, really tiny and that really wouldn't last me much longer than an hour. So that's first generation. It's a proof of concept. It lets you know that the things work, but really it's not a great deal better than that. Second generation, much bigger, as you'll be able to see. The battery's a lot bigger, and this section down here up to this bright silver mark is the battery, so it's a lot bigger. And that would get many vapors through a day. A 20 a day smoker might be able to use one of those for a full day. And of course, the liquid reservoir is also much bigger. And again, there are many 20 a day smokers, or ex-smokers as they would be when they were vaping, um, that could get through a day on one of those, or close to a day. Generation 3 takes things a little bit further. Up until Generation 2, you couldn't vary the power, you couldn't tailor the experience to suit yourself. But with Generation 3, we get a little knob or a menued system or somewhere of varying it like you know they, most smokers know about patches and gum and lozenges and that sort of thing and they may not have thought that was for them it's a completely rational and ethical thing to suggest to them that they try something that over two million people in the uk are now trying and seven hundred thousand have found successful uh, and, and actually i would say if they didn't do that they were being somewhat negligent so it's clear, some people believe wholeheartedly that e-cigarettes are a force for good for smokers. But just what is an e-cigarette? First of all, there's the base of the device. Inside the base includes the electronics and protection circuit. Then there's the battery. On top of that sits the tank and the drip tip. The tank is made up of two sections. Part of it holds the e-liquid and part of it contains the heating element or coil. A wicking material made of cotton, silica or sometimes steel mesh transfers the e-liquid to the coil. Simply press the power button and the coil begins to glow, vaporises the e-liquid which in turn produces the vapour to be inhaled. There are three generations of e-cigs, or that's, that's the way it's generally perceived. Stop, stop, stop e-cigarettes Before they stop you Stop e-cigarettes E-cigarette use is growing at a phenomenal rate. These electronic devices have been chosen by many smokers as a replacement for smoking cigarettes or tobacco. 
not everyone agrees with the use of e-cigarettes and some news stories have left many people confused about just how safe they are compared to smoking. I want to find out whether e-cigarettes might give smokers a better chance at life than an early death that awaits many of them. And I want to understand how e-cigarettes have become such a popular choice in helping people to quit the habit and just how safe they are compared to smoking tobacco. First of all, I need to know just how harmful smoking regular tobacco really is. The death toll from smoking is staggering. Uh, about 100,000 people a year in the UK, about 700,000 a year in the European Union, and about 6 million worldwide die early as a result of their smoking. Um, it's a cause of well over 60 known diseases, um, many forms of cancer, cardiovascular disease, stroke, emphysema, and, and so on. Incredibly damaging thing to do to your health if you smoke and you keep smoking throughout your adult life. With such alarming statistics from smoking, I want to find out what the medical profession thinks of e-cigarettes. As a doctor, I think that we can recommend for our patients who smoke to switch to electronic cigarettes. The evidence so far supports the switch. We know that electronic cigarettes are far less risky than continuing to smoke. We might be surprised to see how many people follow our advice, stop using regular tobacco and will eventually save many years of their life. So it is clear that some people in the medical profession believe that e-cigarettes as an alternative to smoking can be good for health. Five and a bit years ago, smoking 60 a day and I'd cut down, I'm here to tell you. Um, and one of the guys came into the rehearsal studio where I worked with what looked like a fag on the go, this is post 2007, smoking bans in place. I shouted, you can't use that in here. And he said, it's all right, Dave, it's a plastic tab. And I said, get out here, give us a look. How does that work? Had a go and I asked the fourth question that I've been asked a million times, where can I get one of them? Because um, the bottom line on it was, I saw a way of getting past the smoking ban. Because everywhere I worked, there was a smoking ban. So, uh, yeah, 10 days later, I didn't smoke cigarettes anymore. At the moment, there's only 700,000 people that have completely switched to e-cigs and no longer smoking. And yeah, there's 1.4 million that are on that journey, but there's nothing to stop that 1.4 million becoming part of a 2.1 million people who have completely switched. And that, I think, is, that's a public health dividend that most people would like to see. Many people are choosing e-cigarettes over smoking. John Diver is one of them. Some people have said to me that I've, I've quit smoking for another nicotine habit, but I wasn't interested in quitting, so it makes no difference to me. I, I use nicotine and I enjoy it. Um, nicotine in itself is, fairly innocuous, it's not particularly harmful, it's the tar and in the smoke that, that, that causes all the, all the disease and the death, um, so it doesn't bother me any more than it bothers me that people might say I'm addicted to coffee. I think smokers choose to switch to e-cigarettes because they've thought for a while that they really do need to stop smoking, but they, they may have rejected um, other, other ways of doing